presento a Andrés Feil de Alemania. Andrés Feil es uno de los documentalistas y cineastas más reconocidos e importantes en, 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 en Alemania y tiene una trayectoria pues muy larga, que son los años 80, hasta la fecha sigue produciendo su obra, es muy versátil. Eh, también va como justamente explorando estas como fronteras narrativas en muchas de sus obras entre... Eh, documental, entre teatro, incluso entre ficción, entonces bueno, él, él hablará de esto, por lo pronto me da muchísimo gusto darle la palabra y, y pues demos la bienvenida, por favor. Yes, welcome. Um, making documentaries, it's for me like uh, making long journeys. Um, normally it takes two, sometimes three or four, in some cases even five years, Uh, to make a film. It's not always that I really want uh, to invest such a long time, but uh, most of the issues are at the fringe of possibility that people I want to shoot, I want to film. I always like to use the word to film, not to shoot. It, it always means in a way also to kill people. Uh, so let's talk about filming people, uh, not killing people. Um, it takes time to build up trust. So one of the key uh, experiences is, is that it takes a long time sometimes to build up trust. In some cases, like Black Box Germany, you can see in two days, uh, it was a long, like a roller coaster going up and down. Um, I wanted to integrate two different parts of society. One part was... Uh, the family uh, and the friends of a terrorist of the Red Army faction or the Army Fraktion. And uh, the other part were the, a, a victim, the family and uh, the colleagues of a chief bank manager uh, in Germany. And why it took so long? Nobody was willing to be part in the film if the other side was also integrated. So it would have been easily to make a film just on one of the terrorists, or, on the other hand, on the manager of the Deutsche Bank who was killed. But uh, it was a challenge to integrate both parts in, into the film. So in the beginning, um, I just started, I started to, uh, from the scratch, I visited a, 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 a prisoner, a friend of one of the terrorists, and she was willing Then after one year she said, if the other side is in the film, uh, I reject, I won't do it. Then I went to the other side, I went to the widow uh, of the bank manager, and she said, fine, let's do a film about my husband. And uh, I was open, and I told her, well, this morning, she asked me, what did you do this morning? I said, this morning I was in prison. And I visited uh, the girlfriend of Wolfgang Grams, a terrorist, and... Uh, There was not a sudden no, no way, how, how dare you doing it, but there was a, a silence, a deep silence of irritation. I still remember she went to a, some sort of glass mirror, she looked outside and then she just asked me two questions. Did you see into her eyes? And the question meant, of course, did you see in the eyes uh, of the killer of my husband? And I said, yes, I looked into her eyes. And the second question was, what did you see? And then there was a third 
it was not a question, it was more like an answer. And uh, she said, I, at the moment, I don't have the courage to do something like this. So there was a slight hope that we could go a step for, further, that we could maybe in the very end reach a stage of doing a film on both sides. In fact, it took uh, more than two and a half years uh, that I could really integrate uh, the two parts. And when I'm talking about trust, it always means I try to be like, in this case, like an open book. I show the material. The main protagonists have the chance to say no. For a producer, it's like a horror scenario because, uh, as you can imagine, you go on, you shoot, you film, and uh, then you depend on the protagonist who could watch the footage till the state of the rough cut and then finally say, well, this part I don't accept. This part, it's for me, it's a horror scenario to, to imagine that my neighbors, my friend uh, could watch it. Uh, but finally, I always made a good experience with this kind of I, I call it to work on the same level, uh, to show what I'm doing, uh, that they can see what is, well, like I call it uh, the open book, and uh, finally, more or less, to convince them. It was not all, always a success, I have to admit. Sometimes it was really like, um, well, it was a horror scenario for me. And uh, I start with uh, one example, which even took longer to make a film. It, it took uh, uh, more than uh, five and a half years. It's the record in a way. It's The Survivors. Before we go black, uh, back to Black Box Germany, The Survivors is a film on three of my classmates. They committed suicide after they uh, finished uh, the graduation of the school, of high school. And why it took so long? It took so long because nobody in the beginning was willing to be in the film. Everybody said, well, suicide, it's a taboo. I won't, don't want to talk about it. I was welcomed as a friend of the two uh, classmates, but uh, as a director, everybody said, well, we can talk, but with, without a camera. And uh, again, it was a, a journey of back and forth. And uh, so I don't want to talk all the time. Maybe we start with some images. Uh, por favor, um, la película. Und wenn ich zum Beispiel mir überlege, mit Tillmann, 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 ja, wer, wer von uns kann sich vorstellen, warum der Tillmann sich es nicht ausmacht? Wenn der neuen Fertig könnte man sagen, ja, aber Gott, ich sage ja zu viel Angst vorm Sterben. Wenn so wäre, wenn so wäre. Ich weiß nicht, wieso unser Schorsch schon sagt, die hat runde Glieder. Die fängt es natürlich an, du schon wäre es auch, wie ich sage, wenn ich das kann. Ihr wisst, dass wir heute nicht vollzählig sind. Es fehlen drei, die auch in unserer Gemeinschaft nie mehr sein werden. Das sind der Thilo, der Rudi und der Tillmann. Und ihr wisst, dass die drei sich das Leben genommen haben. Die drei, die haben zu unserer Gemeinschaft gehört. Und die drei haben mit uns neun Jahre lang die Schulbank gedrückt. Und ich fände es schade, wenn man die einfach vergessen. Tilo, Tillmann und Rudi waren auch meine Klassenkameraden. 
Kilos Tod konnte ich nicht so wegstecken wie den der beiden anderen. Ich ging zurück, nach Stuttgart-Möhringen. Klassenfoto habe ich zwei Jahre vor dem Abitur gemacht. 17 Jahre später treffen wir uns wieder. Ja, genau, genau, sehr gut. Genau, und Bruno und Höher noch. Ja, ja, ich kann immer wachsen. Ja, ich kann immer wachsen. Ja, ich kann immer wachsen. nicht mehr, wie ich reagiert habe, aber also mir dreht sich jetzt noch alles um, also es ist wie, als ob man schreien müsste, ja, weil, weil das so, weil er sich eben durch dieses Leben so dermaßen durchgequält hat und weil dieser Schluss auch, ähm, also diese Todesanzeige, das war ein einziger Ausdruck dieser Qual, ja, dieses ähm, Arzt im Praktikum, ähm, er hat es geschafft, er hat sich da durchgestrampelt, er hat alles erfüllt, ja, was er machen sollte und, und dann hat er abgedacht. Vater Mattenglott kam eigentlich unmittelbar danach. Okay, um, in this case, but also in the, the other films, there's something like a, I call it the starting point. Uh, to make a, a film. Um, I mention it because when, when I'm talking about these one, two, three, four, five years, sometimes you have to remember this starting point because you really need a lot of energy, there are a lot of obstacles, resistance. And uh, sometimes the starting point in this case, in this film, uh, was fury. I was angry. I was angry at the father of Tilo, you just saw Tilo with the long hair. Um, I got uh, the death notice after he was buried, so I had no chance to say goodbye. I decided uh, then to call the parents and I visited them. And um, I went up into their apartment. He was greeting me with the smile of like a doctor very cold, first shot, second, uh, like a frame of a second, he was smiling. He asked, please come in. And then uh, he started uh, to tell me how Tilo committed suicide. He went into a garage, all the details, he didn't see into the car. Normally you do it um, with some sort of 
uh, if you sit inside with some sort of pipe which you put inside so it's going quicker no he was standing between the wall and the car so he was telling me all the details and I, he felt or he saw I was shocked it was unbearable and then he made a break he was looking at me gazing at me and he said uh, oh I see you have a problem with this I stop now I don't want you to be the fourth of a classmate uh, of the classmate who commits suicide. So, in this was the very moment I knew the camera is a weapon. This was the starting point. I thought, okay, I will make a film on Tilo and the other two classmates. They were not as close as Tilo was. After the whole period, when I look back, this attitude changed in the middle, more or less. So the beginning was really a rage, I was furious and uh, I said, okay, I used the camera to go behind, to look behind uh, the curtain of the parents, of the education. But then something happened on the way, um, I met a former girlfriend of Tilo and uh, she didn't want to meet me for some reason and I didn't know why and she said okay we can meet but if my friend has to be my husband has to be with us in the other apartment I said okay I don't, I don't mind so he can sit in the apartment so I felt like being a monster so she, for some reason she was afraid and uh, but then we started we met and she started to talk and very soon she hit the point why she was so much afraid. She told me, Tilo raped me after we split. He just overwhelmed me, he raped me and then I came into psychiatry for three months and I was pregnant. pregnant. And uh, I decided to make an abortion but still, still today the shock of all this is so deep and I went out and the whole concept in a way of the film was shaken. I, for me in the beginning Tilo was something like uh, the victim and at this point I had to accept there was such a violence in him. I always knew he, he was violent but not in this extent and he was dead, he couldn't say anything about it. So my whole basis of making the film was shaken. And uh, so, in this case, I needed a break and started in a way from the scratch. I made another film, I went to Israel, I made a, f a film uh, called Balagan, about an Israel-Palestinian theater group. I worked with them together and by creating this kind of distance, by working really like from another angle of the world to look back to German history, I could create some sort of distance also for this work and then I went back and I said, okay, uh, let's try to do it now. And uh, still the very end, it was a fight. It was a fight, not only with Gudrun, the friend. She sometimes said, okay, I'm willing to talk about it. Then we, we met, we tried to shoot and she said, no, I'm, I can't, I can't talk about it. I, I only could say I have to accept it because she told me, well, I am now a doctor, what about the patients? When the patients see me uh, in the cinema or on TV and they see, oh, well, this doctor is, was raped, maybe she's strange because of this, or whatever, I could accept that she had a lot of problems. But then she came, she called me and said, Andres, we have to do the film with this point. And I said, great, why? And she said, well, we have to create an image of Tilo which comes closer to all our experience. So also the experience of violence must be integrated. Even my point of violence, my experience of violence. So we, we filmed her, but uh, then the mother of Tilo and the father of Tilo, they called me and said, this is like a destruction of everything. We thought we could trust you. And what, you what, what kind of image are cre you creating from our son? He raped a woman. Who knows if it's true? And you just put it in the film. And they called her and then she had a guilt complex said, no, in terms of the parents, we can't do it. So it was 
I, I don't want to go on with it. It was a back and forth, and in the very end, the scene um, is in the film. Um, but it took uh, the whole thing, as I said, uh, it was a, a journey of uh, five years. And still, it was a problem for me. I always asked myself, uh, what about Tilo? Do I use the story like a thrill? And I had a dream, in fact, I have to tell you, I had a dream uh, in the beginning of the shooting, I dreamt of Tilo, He's, he was coming to, to the apartment and I thought, okay, he's dead, so what, how does he appear? And he was coming up like I had uh, him in memory, very fresh, youthful, powerful, and I put all the stuff I had, all the screenplay photos I put underneath my bed before he was entering entering the room and he said Anders why are you why are you putting all the stuff away it's good that you make the film so I had maybe this dream helped me in a way to to go on with it but still the very end uh, it was something nobody could help me in doing this I felt I have to do the film like I have to do it and it was like a tightrope work in case of uh, Black Box Germany, in a way it was easier. That was the film I was mentioning in the beginning about uh, the terrorist and the manager of Deutsche Bank. It was easier because it was not my personal story. At the same time it was very close. Uh, why was it close? It was close because Thilo sometimes, well, the political closeness to terrorism he had some sort of sympathy for the RAF, sometimes a feeling of justice, they do something, they, even if they kill people, but they do it for a better world, something like this, or somehow romantic, but he was attracted by the courage, by maybe also the arrogance to do something, not only to talk, but to do something. And uh, Wolfgang Grams, the terrorist, had a very similar life. And Tilo didn't go underground, but Wolfgang went underground. So I, this was like the starting point to look into a biography. Tilo was very close to, but then he decided to study medicine and become a doctor. And uh, Wolfgang Grams, the later terrorist, he didn't study medicine, he just went uh, underground. So it was, again, it was some personal uh, approach, some sort of personal necessity uh, to go on with the research.
dann kam dieser, dieser Schlag, also wie eine Explosion. Und dann ähm, habe ich die Autotelefonnummer angewählt und da hieß es, dieser Teilnehmer ist im Augenblick nicht erreichbar. Und das hat mir noch mehr Angst gemacht, weil ich weiß genau, wann das Autotelefon anspringt. Und es musste entweder besetzt sein oder eben durchläuten. Und ähm, dann habe ich mich sofort ins Auto gesetzt und bin einfach diesen Weg, also bin einfach nachgefahren. Und wohl so die letzten Schritte gewesen sein. Hier ist mein Bruder hochgelaufen, kam hier um die Ecke, wie ich eben auch, und wurde dann von allen Seiten ähm, so angegriffen, dass er hier rückwärts vom Bahnsteig äh, gefallen ist, den Kopf aufgeschlagen und dann eben dort lag. Dann sind zwei Beamten ihm nachgejagt und sind äh, hier aufs Geistbett nachgesprungen und haben einer eine auf seinem Bauchknie, der andere nebendran und haben äh, eben die Pistole gezogen.
Das ist eine Minute noch ungefähr. Sobald die dann aus der Tiefgarage schnell rauskommen und der Schwenk nach oben geht, dann. challenge in this film was to find a balance, a balance uh, in terms of the two protagonists, of course. Um, you see in the beginning, the, the first problem was the Traudle Herrhausen, she, the widow, she was in a way used to speak in front of a camera. Um, the brother of Wolfgang, which you see in the small, more like a reportage part, he was not, he was very much afraid very edgy, nervous, so it was hardly impossible to make an interview because he was always saying a half of a sentence and he was stopping and starting from the scratch and so we had to find another solution, that's why we went to the place with him and then it was a little bit easier because the, the freshness of the memories were closer. But this was not a, the, the only problem. The other problem was, of course, that uh, we had uh, a lot of footage of Alfred Herrhausen, public footage, because he was really something like a key figure of the German, not only the German banking system, but also he was very close to politicians, and so he was a public figure. And Wolfgang Grams and his friend Birgit, they went underground, so you destroy all the images. They, they still exist because you are afraid of police and of any traces. So it was a misbalance in a way from the very beginning. You have the building of Deutsche Bank, the aesthetics of Deutsche Bank. You have no building of the Rote Army Fraktion, of the Red Army Faction, of course. All these problems uh, we had in the beginning, and the only thing I tried to build up was a like. A, conquering the structure in a way like a cross. So in the beginning I, tr I tried to make the part of Wolfgang Grams very strong by Super 8 footage. I was very lucky to get the Super 8 footage. So I used all what I had to show him to, to break all the images, especially in the last 10 years, the shift, the public shift of, on terrorism changed in Germany a lot. They're just criminals, killers and that's it. So, just to put uh, images like you saw here, the Super 8 footage of somebody who was playful, or later we learned he wanted to become an actor, uh, nothing, nothing tends in the direction of a terrorist. Um, so, and on the other hand, it's also, I work with the cliche of the, we cut from uh, the shot of Wolfgang at the seaside, we cut in this dark part with the cars, and the cars are now jeopardizing, in a way, destroying also with the sound, uh, the, the small open and soft images of uh, the seaside and the playful Wolfgang Graham. So we, in a way, we play with these cliches, and later on in the film you will see uh, we are going to break them. Of course, it's one narration out of, let's say, 200. You could, out of the footage, which I, sh not only I shooting, filming, but also uh, preparing. I, I spoke to, for the whole project, I think around uh, to 200 protagonists, and I selected for the film 35 or 38 or something, and then in the film are 28. So it's a ratio like 1 to 8 or 1 to 10 or something. So you see how many possibilities we were talking about what is truth or is, is documentary uh, uh, really it shows reality. Of course it's, a, it's one story out of many stories I decided to tell and uh, I think I try at least to show my methods. It's clear what kind of footage I use. It's uh, when some, some, for example, some people ask me, is this Super 8 footage, is it reenacted? It's not reenacted. If it was reenacted, you would find, finally, in the end, like a credit uh, protagonist or like actor for Wolfgang uh, in the youth ABC. I think this is very important to show 
what is uh, you know like a, uh, a recipe to show which parts are used and to give the spectators some sort of security like a contract I make in a way a contract with the spectator that he knows um, what kind of film he is used to see um, and I break always the contract but later on I give him a chance uh, to know what kind of game I was playing and uh, so in a way he can rely on the things I, I'm preparing and it's I won't say manipulation I would say preparation or in reenactment is also some sort of preparation because manipulation is something a step beyond I used one in one scene I really manipulated I don't tell you now which scene it is we can talk when you saw the film I really uh, produced a sound which was true the, the father of Wolfgang Grams told it, it, the same thing to me but not in front of the camera this is really manipulation and I'm talking about it, but uh, the rest is preparation and giving the spectator a chance to follow me. Because I think in, in a time where you can produce everything what you want, every image can be just uh, uh, in a way created. Uh, we, one thing we, which we uh, should offer is transparency of our methods, that uh, the spectator, spectator has a chance to follow us to see what kind of uh, method we are using. If you have up till now questions, don't hesitate to ask me. Uno encuentra, vamos a ver una película tuya. Cuando uno va a ver una película, uno busca una respuesta en las películas. Y uno sale no con respuestas, sino con más preguntas. No da respuestas tu cine de alguna manera, sino que abre más preguntas. Eh, es es, eso es, ¿qué, ¿Podrías hablar de qué es lo, si estoy en lo correcto o por, y por qué lo haces mm. así? Uh, it's a very simple answer because it's my own, I have to put it away. Uh, it's my, they are my, my own questions. And in a way, the process of a filmmaking of five years, it means to use all the questions that I have during the research work, during the shooting, during the editing process and put them into the film. So what you see is the process of thousands of questions and I give them to the spectator, all this complex of, of questions. And uh, so that's what I call the journey of, uh, of filmmaking, is a journey of new questions. And sometimes it's, well, not in encouraging in a way because Let's talk about the survivors, uh, the film about the, the three classmates who committed suicide. Uh, in the beginning, I had a clear picture of the background, of the reasons why they committed suicide. I said, okay, look at the parents, these assholes, in a way they are responsible, they put a lot of pressure, etc. But then it the whole space grew more open. Suddenly, in a way, I felt, okay, Tilo is also responsible for what he did, the rape, and etc. And the more I knew, the less I knew. So it was like a journey into the open space. And I lost all traces sometimes, because I had a clear image of what happened and why did it happen. And then it resolved in a way. It, I was lost in many different angles and then I went really, I can call it also like a black box, I went into the black box and it was quite dark. I felt I could never put a light on what happened in these last seconds. It's a very intimate personal decision to commit suicide and not psychology, not sociology, not any science and not even art can be as arrogant and say okay now we know why and this was a, a process of uh, a, some sort of disillusionment and I think I have to transfer this process and many spectators were disappointed and say okay they, because why, why they were disappointed because they think I go in the movie and it's like a criminal story in the beginning something happened and uh, in the end, I, I know this is the reason he did it, because of this and that. 
And here happens the opposite. And I think we have to be honest with ourselves, to be true with ourselves. If we don't find something, we have to say we, we don't find something. We, we can't offer something which is not uh, there. It's a black box. Ya que dices que a veces uno tiene que aceptar que no encuentra las cosas, ¿hasta qué punto sigues buscando o cuándo es que te das cuenta que te tienes que detener y, y, y bueno, completar tu película y aceptar que ya está terminada? Good question. Um, well, um, first of all, uh, I have an idea of how to tell the story. And then I have all the obstacles people reject and say, no way. But uh, after a while, I, I find other people or make a detour. I try from another angle again. And um, then it's like um, um, the feeling, well, even if I don't tell the story that I wanted to tell in the beginning, it's another story and I can tell it now. And it's not that I can say it's after one year or after six months. It depends really of the project. But um, I always had the feeling when I really went into it that uh, I get something. And uh, also the disappointment. That's not the story I wanted to tell in the beginning. But there is a chance to tell a story. And it's another one. And we have to uh, admit that uh, truth is always showing us from a new angle and we don't can say that's it and sometimes in the editing process like in black box germany i can tell you um i told the producer well look this is something which shows up in the footage i didn't see it nobody saw it so now we have to go to mexico to ask uh, the former mexican president for some reason and uh, it was of course uh, it, expensive and uh, i said no other chance If we want to make the film, look, this is the line of the of the, the elements of the story. We have to go to Mexico, and I could convince him. So sometimes uh, it's hard. Sometimes you learn the things after the film is finished, and then you have to write a book or make a theater play or whatever. En esta película de Black Box que nos presentaste este principio, dentro de los primeros 10 minutos, o sea, había posiblemente más de un 50% que estaba musicalizado o que tenía algún tipo de tratamiento sonoro, este, eh, bueno, un armado sonoro este, como que intenta hacer un, llevarnos a una atmósfera o algo. ¿Hasta qué punto...? Este, este, este armado sonoro para ti puede eh, como interferir con, 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 un, con un lenguaje más eh, realista o que intenta mostrar las cosas de, de la manera como, la, como, como fueron. ¿no? ¿Cómo, ¿Cómo es que decides hacer el armado sonoro? It really depends on the, on the film. Uh, for example, in the kick there's no music at all. It's just um, sound design, but no music. And uh, in this case, you see it's a created image. You see the colors, it's reenacted. In this case, I decided to use music. And we were working a long time, which kind of music? Uh, first of all, I wanted to use original music. And it was too expensive. And then we had this angle, uh, this African aspect by, use, by working with uh, the singer from Africa. And the sound is very tricky, uh, the, the, the lyrics are very tricky in a way, um, double binded. And uh, we worked more than, just for the title song, more than two months. So it was not just something we put on. And also the sound design on this uh, small uh, fragment of archive footage with the car which was destroyed. You just hear the steps. Um, I like to reduce elements. So to make sure, also for the, for the spectator, it's not reality what we show. It's just an image of reality and we work with a sound which shows you it's not reality. It's some, somehow artificial. And that's what I say by the word using a contract with the spectator. That he knows, okay, it's art. It's a piece of art. 
uh, maybe shitty art, but it's art. And um, so he can tell the difference between, well, this is reality, we just so archive and it's all as it was bullshit. We know it, I don't have to tell you. So it's a clear chance for the spectator to accept the contract. Okay.